Okay, we're still doing 15.2. Oh, it rubbed off. 15.2 part four now. I just wanted to show you that this is something that's going to be coming later on. And I, before we know it. So, I don't know. It's just a lot of stuff. And I didn't want to put it in the other video for you. Okay, so here we go. I'm still doing problem A, okay? So I did letter A. We found the pH of the buffered solution. It was 0.50 molar acetic acid and 0.50 molar acetate. And then I said, okay, look at part number two, A number two. It said, we have a buffer, okay? And the pH was, it was 4.74 in part one. Next, 0 0.020 moles of sodium hydroxide um, is added to two liters of the buffered solution. Calculate the change in pH that occurs in the buffer system. Okay, what's the new pH and the change in pH going to be? Okay, we're going to add 0 0.020 moles of NaOH to two liters of the buffer. All right. Now, when I do this problem, this, remember we have an ice box? I'm going to make something called a stoic box. I call it a stoic, or, or sometimes they call it a BCA or BCF or ICF. Like, what are we talking about? I'll show you how it works. Now, in an ice box, when I call it ice box, that is an equilibrium, and I always put molarities inside an ice box. And my boxes are getting boxless, but oh well. But when I'm going to do this here, I'm doing a stoichiometry reaction. I'm going to add NaOH to the buffer. The first thing you need to know is what is NaOH going to act, react with? I kind of already told you. In this buffer system, we have acetic acid and acetate. It's conjugate present. So what will go out to react with the, with the base? The base, the thing that's going to react with the base is the acid, which is the acid of these two. In the system, it's CH3COOH. Or you know what? I, I guess I'm going to use that one, HC2H3O2. I think it's easier in stoichiometry maybe to, to see it for what you're used to, like double replacement, if I use that form of it. So sodium hydroxide is added to acetic acid. Now, you have to know what it's going to produce. Sodium acetate and HOH water. Now, I'm not going to worry about the net ionic, okay? But first, I'm just going to write down what goes on in the reaction. Oh, I really might need some more space. I'm going to probably have to erase something in one moment. All right. Now, here's what they're going to do. You have 0.020 moles of NaOH added to 2 liters. I always recommend that I'm going to make another box underneath this stoichiometry equation. Stoic box, or sometimes they call it an... Um, ICF or B, I think it's maybe B, C, A, before, change, and after. Because that way you'll, you'll think of it different than an icebox. Icebox, I always put molarities in them. They don't label them. But in this, I only want to put moles. I just want to do something to be consistent and be careful with it. I'm going to add 0 0.020 moles to 2 liters of the buffer. So that means I'm going to add 0 0.0. 20 moles of NaOH, but then how many moles of this will I have? That's, that's going to take a little bit of math. So I'm going to say, well, I've got 2 liters of 0.50 molar. So if I've got 2 liters, I'll do it down here and then I'll erase it. 2 liters of 0.50 moles for every 1 liter of, you know, HC2H3O2. That's going to be one molar, right? One mole. I mean, not one molar, but one mole is in there. If I have two liters, that means I've got one mole of HC2H3O2. So I'm going to put a one there. One point, I guess 1.0 moles of this. Now, you, you could, if you wanted to, you could have said, well, 0.020 in two liters 0.020 divided by 2, that's 0.010 molar. And I could put molarity there if I wanted to. But I just like, for whatever reasons, I like to put only moles in this box, the BCA box. I got 0.020 of this, one mole of this, and they're going to react. 
The other thing about this box is notice the arrow only goes one way. It's not going to be a two-way um, equilibrium. All right. So 0.020 moles of sodium hydroxide and this. And what's going to happen? Now, these we're going to start off. We have nothing to start off with, okay? But what I'll do is now, which one of these is going to overpower the other? One mole of this and 0.020. Obviously, that's going to overpower it. That's going to all be eaten up. All the base that comes in is going to be eaten up by the acid. So we have another word for that from last semester. It's called limiting reagent. So we're going to subtract the limiting reagent. Remember, the limiting reagent is the one that all the way breaks, up, breaks it off. In fact, you could do limiting reagent problems this way, but I think it might get a little complicated at times. But anyway, if you did this, remember, 0.020 moles divided by 1 or one mole divided by one, since they're all one to one to one to one ratios, it's, it's really easy on these problems. So that has to be the limiting reagent. So I'm going to subtract all of that will react, minus 0.020. The change will be all of that gets eaten up. Then how much of this will be eaten up? Well, it has to match one to one ratio, which is easy. So it's also 0.020. You know, um, if... If there had been like a number there, like a like a two in, in the equation, then you'd have to have not O20, but it'll be O40 of that one, right? You know, you'd need for every one mole of that, you'd need two moles of that, but that's not the case. It's, it's the same number. And all the acid and base buffers are one-to-one -one ratios that they give you. So you subtract the limiting reagent. So when it says to add the base, we're going to make a stoic box. In the stoic box, you got to write the equation. Then I call it our BCA instead of IC. That way you won't mix it up. Before, change, and after, and only use moles in this. So I, I put O20 moles. Since I had two liters of the buffer, that means I have not 0.50, but I've got one mole of that in this sample that I used. And now this side will be plus 0.020, and that will be plus 0.020. Next. That minus that is zero. One minus 0 0.020 is negative, no, not negative, it's 0 0.080 moles. And then this one is 0 0.020. And then that is also 0 0.020. Now, what happens after the stoichiometry reaction? There are different possibilities of what could happen. Maybe the buffer is going to eat up all that base. Remember, the point is you add base to the buffer. The buffer attacks it with the acid. The, you know, the acetic acid comes out. And then the base is neutralized and you're gone. Then when you're finished, do you still have a buffer? Or do you have something else? Because it, it could be possible that it changes at, and it's no longer a buffer. It might be a different kind of system. So in this case, at the end, after, what do you have left over? You got 0 0.080 moles of acetic acid present. And up, oh, look, you also have 0 0.020 moles of acetate. Don't worry about the water. I mean, we, we didn't really need to put that there. So, what does it mean if you have both the acid and you have its conjugate present? That means you have a buffer. You have a but you still have a buffer now. And the question, it says calculate, it said calculate the change in pH, not just the pH, but the change. Well, we'll get the pH, then we'll find the change after that. Um, okay, so to calculate the pH, guess what? I'm going to use the, the equation, the shortcut. If you wanted to, though, you could, at this point, here's what you could do. You could create an ice box and say, okay, now I have, after this adding the base, I have 0 0.080 moles of HC2, HVO2. And I could put that up here, 0 0.080 moles but remember, I like to put molarity in the ice box. Moles divided by how many liters was it? Two liters. Okay. And I also have 0 0.020 moles divided by two liters of that. And, okay. So what I can do now, I can do an ice box. I got to divide that. So that could be 0 0.040 and that could be molarity. You know, sometimes I do that, in fact. And then my ice box, I'll just go I, ice, ice, whatever. Ice box, I, ice box, icy, whatever. Or ice. I'll go, okay, I'll take that. Now it's because 0.040 molar. 
and that becomes 0.010 molar. Okay, so, and now I can do my icebox. If you want to do icebox, you could, but I'm going to, I'm going to say, well, but look, I've already got, I know I have a, a buffer still, so now I can use the Henderson equation right here. So pH equals the negative, oh, I don't want to say negative log, it's the pKa, I better write it out first. pH equals the pKa of, uh, plus the log of, and I like to always customize this, the log of C2H3O2 negative, molarity over HC2H3O2 molarity. So I might run off the page a little bit. I'm going to try to fit this. The pKa, same as before, negative log of 1.8, 10 to the negative 5. Now, I want to show you something very useful, I believe, right here. And this has to do with my own little, like, bookkeeping and accounting stuff. In fact, I better make this smaller so it's going to fit. Okay. As time has gone by through my thermo and all, I've learned these little things that will help me to keep organized. Okay? And I, I, mean, I write messy and stuff. I try to make it organized at least. When I push log of acetate molarity over um, acetic acid molarity. Look at what I'm going to do. I hope it fits on the screen. I'm trying to see if it's going to fit. Yeah, I'm down there. Okay, I'm going to put moles. Remember, it's mole per liter over mole per liter. So how many moles of acetate do I have? For acetate, it's 0 0.020. 0 0.020 moles. Now, how many liters do I have? I've got in a two liter solution. That was a question back there. It's good that you're doing the same thing you did up here, actually, but that I was showing you 2.0 liter. Now I'm going to divide that. That will give you the molarity of the, the acetate, 0 0.020 divided by two liter. But now for the uh, acetic acid, it's 0 0.080 mole also divided by the volume 2.0 liter. They're in the same container. So here's a really useful thing that you're going to see, and it's going to happen later on. It's going to come back, and you'll be happy about this. But notice this. It doesn't matter. 2 liter, 2 liter, it doesn't even matter. They have the same volume. They'll be canceled out. So those 0.20 divided by 0.80 log of, log of that is the same as the log of 0 0.020 divided by 2. You know, if I if I calculate those out all the way and use these two numbers, then I, I'll get the same value as if I just use those two numbers when I divide them. Because those numbers are the same. And they will always be the same in this equation. So that's a, that's a little shortcut you might like. All right. I'll just, I better calculate. I better show you a little bit of the mass step. So I already know that one is 4.74. Does that fit on there? You know, maybe if I make it another color, it'll be even easier to see it. This is 4.74. Okay. Plus the log of this number right here. So that's 0 0.020 divided by 0 0.080, which is 0.25. All of that is the log of, the same as log of 0.25. So log of 0.25 is... Oh boy, 0.25 log, negative 0.60. So minus 0 0.60. So plus negative, does that show up? I don't think it does. I can make it like this. The log of 0.25. This oh, divided by that is 0.25. The log of this is negative 0.60. There it is. So what is 4.74 minus 0.60? It's 4.14, 4.14. Okay, so hold on a minute. Sorry about that. So 4.14 is your new pH. Okay, because it's minus 0.60. Like, yeah, there, it could fit zero on the board a little bit like that. Okay, now for whatever reason, this question said, what is the change in pH? The change in pH will be the final minus initial pH. So it will be, it was 
I mean, sorry, it ended at 4.414, and the initial was 4.74. So the change was actually what you saw there, negative 0.60. Negative 0.60 was the p change in pH. That was this question. And why, I don't know why they asked it that way. All right. I have shown you some craziness now. And now you see how the world of the buffers get. And just imagine, this was adding a base. If you add an acid to the buffer, if this had been HCl, well, then it wouldn't react with this. It would react with the conjugate. A different reaction would occur. But you still have a stoichiometry box to make. All right. So I'll just keep it at that. Um, I'm not going to actually do, well, I could do part three. I don't really have to do that. It says, what would the change in pH be if 0.020 moles of NaOH is added to pure water? And how is that compared to a buffer system? Well, we can look at it and see. I guess it might not be bad. It won't take very long to do this. This is very quick. All right, so I'm going to erase all this. So, in other words, when we added the NaOH to the buffer system, the pH went down by 0.60, okay? But what if instead I put 0 .20, 0 0.020 moles of NaOH and I had it in pure water? So that would mean two liters of pure water. Pure water. And then we'll assume that the volume is, is you know, is, is change is negligible. So then in other words, you have 0 0.010 molar NaOH. Well, how do you find the pH of 0.10 molar NaOH? Well, that's not going to be any equilibrium. That's easy. That's just going to be, well, you'll find the pOH, right? So remember, that is, that will equal, if it's 0.10 molar NaOH, oh, 0 0.010, 0 0.010 molar NaOH, then that means it's going to be the OH negative will be also 0 0.010 molar because it's a strong base. So if I add that to pure water, <clears throat> the pOH equals the negative log of the OH concentration, 0 0.010. So the pOH would be 0 0.010 log negative 2, 2.00. 2 so that means the pH equals 14 minus 2, which is... 12. pH is 12. So the point is when you put the pure base into water, the pH becomes very basic, 12. That's very high, okay? But when you put it in the buffer, it only went, it said it, the pH went down by 0.60. Is that right? Um, yeah. Yeah. And went down by 0.60. I wonder why. What was I getting confused about? Change. In the, oh, in the last one, we checked, we calculated the change of pH. So the change of pH here would be the original pH was 4.74 minus 12. Well, that's actually not going to be a negative. It should be the other way around. It went up in this case, the pH. Well, yeah, it, it would actually be up. It, it, you didn't, oh, yeah, because you didn't. it didn't have a 4.74 in the beginning, did it? No, 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 it didn't. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't. Sorry. I, my, my brain, I, I know what happened now. Pure water was, but the pure water, pure water has a pH of 7. Did it say calculate the change of pH would occur? Yeah, it did say when you add the pure water. So it went from 7 to 12, okay? So it went from 12, final, the change in pH, ah, I don't even know why we did the change of pH pH final minus initial. So the final pH is 12 minus the initial would have been 7. For pure water, it's 7. So that would have been 5. So positive 5. So there, yeah, that just tells you how it works. So having the buffer in place, kept it buffered it. It, it combated the base being added. You wouldn't want your blood pH to, to shoot up, you know, all the way to 12 like that. 7 to about 7 all the way up to 12. That would be dangerous. But from But instead... In the other case, it just in the buffer system, you know, now that's not in your blood, but it just changed very small, very a very little bit. Okay, all right. So I wanted to just show you this video, and I'll see in the next video what happens as far as our next lesson goes. This is prob this is going to come up in your next calculations probably, maybe in, in a couple of lessons away. And since I had it here, 
this is everything right here really about how buffers work. The major difference is I could have instead of an acid system, I could have a basic system and then I have two other possibilities. So I'll probably put that an example of that on the next videos. I'll see you.